Does these bones cost them where they're breeding but to play at the loggets with them? My <coughs> hate to think on. A pickaxe and a spade, a spade, for an a shrouding sheet. Oh, a pit of clay for to be made, for such a guest is me. Here's another. A spell in his time might be a great buyer of lands with his statutes, his recognizances, his fines, his double vouchers, his recoveries. Is this the fine of his fines and the recovery of, of his recoveries? To have his fine pate full of fine dirt? The very conveyances of his lands will hardly lie in this box. He must inherit it himself, hath no more. Eh? Not a jot more, my lord. I'll speak to this fellow. Whose grave's this, sir? Mine, sir. <laughs> oh, a pit of clay for to be made. For such a guest is me. I think it is thine indeed, for thou liest in it. You lie out on it, sir, and therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it to be in it and say it is thine. So for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore, the, thou liest. A uh, quick lie, sir, to go away from me to you. What man dost thou dig it for? For no man, sir. What woman then? Nor none neither. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. <laughs> How absolute the knave is. We must speak by the card or equivocation will undo us. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Oh, all the days of the year I came to it. That day that our old King Hamlet um, overcame Fortinbras. How long is that been? Jack, cannot you tell that? <laughs> Every fool knows that. It was the very day that young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and is sent into England. Aye, Mary. Why was he sent into England? Because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there, and if he do not, it is no great matter there. Why? <laughs> well, it will not be seen in him there. There, the men are as mad as he. <laughs> How came he mad? Ooh, very strangely, they say. Oh. Strangely. Faith in with losing his wit. Yeah. Upon what grounds? Why, oh, here in Denmark. <laughs> here now, this skull oh, has been in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? Oh, a horse and mad fellows it was. Whose do you think it was? Uh, nee, I know not. <laughs> he was a, 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 a pestilence of him for a mad road. He poured a flagon of Rhenish over my head once. This very skull was Yorick's skull, the king's jester. This? In that? Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, the most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and how aborted in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. He hung those lips and I've kissed, I know not how often. Where be your jibes now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of element that want to set the table in a roar? Not one now to mock your own grinning, quite chapfallen. Now, get you to my lady's chamber and tell her that a paint an inch thick, to this favour she must come. Make her laugh at that. To what base uses we may return, Horatio. Imperious Caesar dead and turned to clay might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh! That that earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall to expel the winters for. But soft, but soft, here comes the king, the queen, and the courtiers. Who is this they follow with such maimed rites? This doth betoken the corpse they follow did with desperate hand fordo its own life. Tis of some estate. Couch me a while and mark. ceremony else? This is Laertes, a very noble youth, Mark. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far advanced as we have warranties. Her death was doubtful, and but that great commander swayed the order, she should in ground unsanctified have lodged till the final trumpet. For charitable prayers, shards, splints, and pebbles should be thrown on her. Yet here she is allowed her virgin trance, 
her maiden sermon. And the bringing home of bell and burial. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead to sing her requiem and grant such rest to her as the peace party soul. Layer of the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh be violet spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. What? Fear of Philia. Sweets to the sweet, farewell. O oh, treble woe, fall ten times treble on that cursed head, whose wicked deed my most ingenious senses did deprive thee of. Hold off the air for a while, till I have quarter once more in my arms. Now pie your dust upon the quick and dead, till on this flatter mountain you have made. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded healers. This is I, Ham of the day. The devil take my soul! Uh, I pray it's not well. I pray thee take my fingers from my throat. For though I be not split of and rash, yet I have in me something dangerous which I know I to fear. Full of my hands! Let them thunder! Gentlemen, gentlemen! Good my lord, be quiet. Well, I will fight with them upon this theme! Till my eyelids will no longer work! My son, what theme? I love the fear! Forty thousand brothers could not, with all the quantity of love, make up my son. What will they do for her? Oh, he is mad, Laertes. For love of God, forbear him. Swords! Show me what thou do! With weep, with fight, with fast, with tail, I self, I'll do it! Does the community of wine to face me with leaping in her grave? Be very quick with that, and so I! Ah! This is mere madness, and thus a while the fit will work on him. Anon, as patient as the female dove, when that her golden couplets are disclosed, his silence will sit drooping. Ah! Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have his day. I pray you, good Horatio, wait upon him. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We will put the matter to the present push. Good Gertrude, set to watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shortly shall we see. Till then, in patience our proceedings be. Thank <laughs> you. 